Uh, what I'm going to show you in the next little video is a, uh, a spreadsheet that I created for my students in financial economics and other subjects which allows them to see the dynamics of the yield curve. And for this little uh, uh, talk, I got some US Federal Reserve data for the 1960s, which was uh, the period within which the Operation Twist um, was in place. And uh, I thought it would be interesting for you just to see the monthly movements in the yield curve across from the federal funds rate at one end out to the 20 year Treasury bond rate at the other end, and uh, you'll see what happened. So we'll we'll bring up the spreadsheet, and uh, I'll I'll show you that. Okay, well here's the spreadsheet. I used to give this to students in financial economics and related type subjects, and it allowed them to see and play with yield curves, and to see how they move over the different times, and then relate those movements to actual events and policy changes that were occurring at the times. Uh, this is US data available from the Federal Reserve. It describes the overnight funds rate, the one-year bill, the three-year bill, five-year bill, ten-year bill and twenty-year bill. It was the only data that was available uh, uh, for the 1960s, which is the period in which Operation Twist was um, uh, being used. And uh, at the time the US economy uh, had a current account deficit and the the central bank considered that they could uh, attract financial flows in through the capital account by pushing up the short rates and they, they devised that they could do that through normal open market operations by selling short-term government bonds and paper into the markets, uh, increasing supply uh, reducing the prices and therefore driving up yields which would drive the short end up but at the same time the US economy was uh, facing recession and they didn't want to push the long rates up which would then spread out into uh, the investment rates in which companies would uh, borrow money to invest and uh, so they wanted to uh, new keep the long rates down and remember, uh, this was a period, a Bretton Woods period, where there was uh, f fixed exchange rates. And so monetary policy, um, unlike today, had to was tied to defending the exchange rate. And so the, the two ends of the yield curve, the two parts of the operation, the selling and the buying, selling here and buying here, were devised to sterilise the impact on the money supply and therefore not... Uh, um, create problems for their, their exchange rate. Uh, now this is a normal yield curve shape in January 1961. The short rates are lower. Uh, the expectation allegedly is that the economy will have some growth and therefore some risk of inflation and so the longer rates have to uh, reflect that risk. So let's see what happens. This is about Operation Twist began about here. Let's see what happens as I trawl through time, watch up here, and watch what happens to these uh, yields. So here am I going. I'm starting now. We're now into 1962. You can see already the curve starting to flat. The short-term strategy is pushing up the rates, and the long-term rates are pretty stable, moving up just slightly. And now we're well into 64, we're now into early 65, the curve is just about flattened by the end of the first quarter. For all intents and purposes, the yield curve is flat, which was the objective of the, um, the exercise. Now this doesn't prove that the exercise was uh, uh, successful. It's consistent with the aims of the exercise, but as I write in the blog, there were other factors uh, going on other uh, caps on interest rates and also uh, strange behaviour by the US Treasury uh, which which appeared to be uh, um, offsetting some of the, uh, uh, particularly out here, some of the uh, purchasing uh, of the central bank. The other point to note, as I say in the blog, is that there wasn't a very large program uh, in terms of the uh, in terms of proportions to the overall market. 
So if you absent the uh, the other uh, factors uh, and the central bank stood ready to buy everything out at the long end, then uh, there's no doubt that the strategy of altering the composition of their their balance sheet would be effective in whole controlling rates right across the the curve. Okay, so I think that's enough. I uh, hope you found that interesting.